The Israelis did not have any contemporary MBTs in 1958, only outdated M50-51 Shermans that had been rearmed and light AMX-13s. A total of 390 used Centurion Mark III and Mark V vehicles were purchased from the British government. The term shot was given to them, though rather quickly when they were regionally adjusted to meet local requirements. When they were still in use in the 1990s, the British Centurions proved to be Israel's most valued weapon. A number of times, particularly during the 1973 Yom Kippur War, when they were camped high on the Golan Plateau Reserve, shots and megaches, M60s, methodically took out about 250 Syrian tanks in a single day, turning around a precariously perilous position for the IDF. This was made possible by the long range of their 105mm gun and their training in marksmanship. What happened exactly during the Yom Kippur War? What's packed with Israel's shot tank? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced MBTs at present. So stay with us till the end of this video, so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's get started. The British Centurions, which were initially supplied in the late 1950s, were dubbed shot, as in scourge or whip, modernized and updated shortly after being purchased. When the new locally built 105mm based on the British Roth L7 became available, it was upgunned to the Mark III, which was initially still outfitted with a 20-pounder main gun. A hefty Cal 50 on a AA mount required a modification to the coupler ring. Other specific upgrades were a better fire extinguishing system, better electrical systems, and better brakes, as well as higher fuel capacity. The engine was left alone, garnering the designation Shot Meteor later for these unmodified vehicles. The raised rear deck of the Shot Cal, which is short for Continental and is often referred to as the Cal, makes it easy to identify as an American diesel vehicle. In fact, they all have Allison CD856 transmission paired with a brand new Continental AVDS 1792A diesel engine. Commonality with the M48 M60's fleet and maintenance was also aided by this. Additionally, they were equipped with American radios and either a larger 12.7mm Browning M2HB caliber HMG that was also placed on a forward centerline mount over the mantlet or a 7.62mm Browning Cal 30 caliber GMPG that was preferable mounted to the commander's cupola arm. The fire control system as a whole was locally modernized. A new turret rotating mechanism was installed, a new gun stabilizer, the sights as well, new IR sights. The glacis armor and turret front were thickened by add-on layers and later received provisions for the new explosive reactive armor blazer package. Also on the glacis and turret front. In the end, a larger ammunition configuration was employed to boost ammo storage. New smoke dischargers and an additional turret basket were added to the turret, which was later shielded by armored coverings and a new commander's cupola from the Gimel in 1982. Until the 1980s came to a close, the shot cal were in use. Later, they were destroyed and progressively repurposed for new roles. As a result, the most of them are still in use today but with updated roles. The Israeli Defense Forces possessed 385 centurions in total when the Six-Day War began in 1967, but only 293 of them were actively serving. They even managed to increase this number by seizing 30 Jordanian Centurions out of 44. Less than 100 tanks of the 7th Armored Brigade fought off the advance of about 500 Syrian T-55s and T-62s at the Valley of Tears on the Golan Heights during the Yom Kippur War in 1973, wiping out about 250 of them before the rest fled. This battle cemented the shots as one of the most lethal tanks ever. It was caused by a combination of carefully thought out positions on the heights with gun down positions. The Israeli tankers' expert long range marksmanship as a result of their rigorous training, the Syrian tanks' inferior 100mm long range accuracy, which was crucial because it prevented them from being able to target the Israeli tanks on the heights when closing in, and the Israeli tanks' superior 105mm long range accuracy. According to the company's commander's report, they were able to methodically attack each tank 
in the order of arrival before any could accurately retaliate. They were able to do this until they literally ran out of ammunition, losing 60 to 80 tanks and other vehicles. Approximately 500 tanks were lost by Syria in all over the course of three days, and many of them will join the IDF army as Tehrans. Due in part to the Egyptian infantry's widespread use of briefcase AT-3 Sagar ATGMs, as well as RPG-2s and RPG-7s on the Bar Lev line, which came as a real shock to the IDF, the heavy losses in the Sinai, about 200 tanks, or about 40% of their southern armored groups during the first two days of the war, were partially compensated. One of the most incredible actions was the engagement of around 150 Syrian tanks by only two damaged shots, commanded by Zvika Greengold, which resulted in the destruction of roughly 60 of them. On October 9, the IDF's 7th Brigade had only six tanks left at one point. The Syrians had lost around 1,000 tanks overall during the five days of warfare, along with an entire armored division and reserves. The shot cal didn't materialize until after the war in 1974, and over time, largely as a result of that experience, they gradually improved until their last active involvement in Lebanon in 1982. Here was where the C version, Gimel, was initially released, featuring the Blazer ERA package for the first time, reactive armor covering the turret front and hull glasses. Midway through the 1980s, a new model called Daylet, with minor defensive upgrades but ostensibly lacking the Erdan cupola, and a gun thermal sleeve was released. The shots were removed from service by 1990 or before with the end of the war, but the majority were transformed into APCs and CEVs. It was soon discovered that such a vehicle could be easily created by simply converting the hulls of obsolete main battle tanks that were already in the IDF inventory in a manner similar to the Kangaroo APCs of World War II, which were converted from such tanks as the M4 Sherman. The finished product would be the first Kangaroo-type APC created since the 1940s. A handful of undamaged shot tank hulls without turrets belonged to the IDF and were located at the armor graveyards. The Nagma shot was developed in an unexpectedly short amount of time. In 1984, the first operational examples were in use. A pyramidal casemate with a rectangular roof has taken the place of the iconic Centurion turret. Four troops can stand in the casemate roof's two circular hatches at the front, which are hinged in the back, and two rectangular hatches at the aft, which are hinged in the front, allowing them to see all four quarters around them. The casemate has a characteristic flanging on the sides, either for structural reinforcement or to allow the fitting of extra add-on armor. Weapon skate mounts are installed in front of each hatch, enabling personnel to fire on all four sides of the vehicle if necessary. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.